Episode 16, MacGuffin Family Dinner. Previously on Second Fiddles, Linus and Tammy's relationship started under false pretenses. Tammy was following the orders of my wretched twin brother, Fourth Wall, and Linus was trying to be a good son and do what I told him. Despite the initial lies, their love blossomed, causing Linus to betray his family. Tonight, I'm meeting with Linus and his sister Sally for dinner to hash it all out. Let's begin! Dad, stop talking directly to the listener. It's weird. Aw, come on, son. You used to like it. Having you narrate my life when I was a kid was cool, like I was living in a fairy tale or something, but now it's just creepy. Yeah, Daddy, fairy tales are way cooler than narrating podcasts. You know my girlfriend, Tammy? Uh, she once had a run-in with a hench person named Podcast. He was an assassin who made a cast of his victims' faces in plaster. What does that have to do with pods? The pod part was an acronym? Either proof of delivery, you know, using the plaster cast to show he did the job, or payable on death because uh, he was an assassin. Tammy wasn't sure, but both of those sound like good guesses to me. I think he's somewhere on the island now. I know this podcast assassin. His name isn't an acronym. He's part plant, and he sleeps in a giant pea pod at night. You are correct about his current whereabouts, however. He is still on the island. Huh. Thanks. I'll let Tammy know. I could let her know. I would love to get to know her. Let me guess. You would get to know her by burning her at the stake. No, wait. Melting her skin while she's still alive. Or maybe cooking her legs and making her eat them. Am I that predictable? Princess, once you force people to cannibalize their own legs three weeks in a row, it kind of becomes your signature move. Hey, they deserved it. What could they possibly have done to deserve that? One of them gave me a bad pedicure. So you killed her co-workers too? I really didn't pay attention to her face, so it took me three tries until I found the right one. Oh, oh okay, yeah, that makes sense. Daddy, he's mocking me! Now, Linus, don't upset your sister before dinner is served. What are we eating, anyway? Previously, at the last MacGuffin family dinner, we ate wild-caught Alaskan salmon. But this time, during episode 16, we're going to feast on the tiny carcasses of Cornish game hens. Let's begin! Dad, seriously, what the f***? Sorry, force of habit. I hate Cornish game hens. They're like the most pretentious entree I can think of. And their bones are so tiny. Why are you complaining about something being pretentious? You're rich, you have superpowers, and you look like a movie star. You literally have it all. That new girl of yours is a bad influence. I never used to think about my life until I got to know people that maybe aren't quite so privileged. I mean, I'm white, I'm wealthy, I'm a cisgendered male. Whatever that means. And like you said, I have powers. I literally can't think of anyone else more entitled. Dang, I believe my son is woke. Ew, Dad, don't say that. Please. Well, you can be proud that our family has never killed anyone based on their race or creed. Just for the money and power. (laughs) And for fun. I like the crackling sounds that skin makes when burn blisters start to pop. Wow, I can't wait to start eating. Where's our staff, anyway? They haven't even checked on us to see if we want drinks. Also... No one's been over to my wing in a while to clean any of my rooms. Not that I need help. I'm an adult, I can clean after myself. But laundry is really hard, so maybe someone could help me with that. No staff tonight, son, just the chef. Since they don't know about our criminal empire or our aliases, I figured it would be better for less ears to be present so no one overhears anything. Regarding your rooms, after that whole debacle with your girlfriend and her sidekick friends, I fired your maid. Well, I fired her, if you know what I mean. Are you saying you set her on fire? What? No! I let her go with a huge severance and told her she could use us as a reference. She was a hard worker. I'm not a monster. Well, you killed over a dozen people because of a bad haircut, and you tried to kill Max because he and the stag sent you to the island, which is literally their job. Do bank robbers get revenge on cops who put them behind bars? Oh, yes, 100%. Yeah, all the time. It's a fairly common practice. Revenge is fun. You could have at least not killed the stag. I mean, he was a giant deer. Was he really that much of a threat to you? Oh, Daddy said I needed to kill him so your girl's little brother would take all his powers. Excuse me? 
Sally, what do I always say about revealing our master plans? You say, Sally, don't tell people the plan because then they'll know how to stop you. Exactly, princess. Now make small talk with your brother while I go check on our dinner. How is your screamy little witch of a girlfriend doing, anyway? She's fine, I guess. No thanks to you and your sick lust for vengeance. I'm actually surprised you and Dad showed up tonight. Have you been staying in one of Dad's lairs? Which one, the underground lair? Ew, no. The underground lair's humidity is really bad for my hair. The beachfront lair? I thought about that, but no. The one under the shopping mall? Why are you so interested? Do you want to sick those sidekicks on me again? I want to know why you're hiding in the first place. The public doesn't know your identity. They just think you're the vapid, shopaholic daughter of a business tycoon. I mean, the media bought the whole rehab story when you were sent to the island, and Dad's been the face of Montgomery Industries for over 20 years, so it would seem weird that he's vanished all of a sudden. <laughs> Don't worry. Daddy and I'll pop up in a few days to write a check to some charity for dead puppies or whatever. Philanthropy always helps to refocus the story. Are you actually going? Or sending doubles that look like you? We've recruited the doppelgang to help us. Between their shapeshifters, ventriloquists, and makeup artists, we'll be seen and heard out and about periodically over the next few months. It's all been planned. Wow, you're so prepared. Mom would be proud of you. You always were a mama's boy. Says the quintessential daddy's girl. Come on, he still calls you princess and you call him daddy. Either there's some weird Freudian stuff going on or he's spoiled you to the point of no return. I really do wish mom was here to see what you've become. She would probably be so buried in one of her books she wouldn't even pay attention. She loved her books more than us, you know. More than you, anyway. You treated her like the evil stepmother. She was weak, Linus. You held her on such a pedestal, but you don't seem to remember that she was the one who left us. If you were my daughter, I probably would have left you too. No offense. Ah, uh, but what about you, brother? Why did she leave you? You were her favorite little thing, but she still left. Maybe it wasn't her choice. You ever think about that? Dad isn't exactly known for telling the truth. Besides, he's clairvoyant. He's gotta know where she is. But yet, he's never tried to bring her back. He's so controlling, it doesn't make any sense. Maybe she's... Dead? I don't think so. Dad would have told us. You just said he's a liar. Would that surprise you? I don't know what to think anymore. All I know is that she, uh... Did I miss anything? Are you two behaving yourselves? Well, Sally didn't start an evil monologue yet, so there's still hope for the evening. Whatever. Is dinner ready yet, Daddy? Not quite yet, Princess. <sighs> Ugh, I hate waiting. We know. Dad, what was Sally saying about you orchestrating Max acquiring his new powers? Well, son, there are certain things I feel comfortable telling you, and that's not one of them. Is that why you wanted me to get close to Tammy and go watch Max after you kidnapped him? You knew she was going to follow me and piss off Sally? I'm not sure if I follow. Oh my god, you did! You knew Sally would get sent back to the island if I got close to Tammy, and then you probably tipped her off to the stag's location. Sally, when you went after the stag, who told you where he was? Daddy did. And whose idea was it? Oh, it was totally mine. We were talking about what he and Buck did to me, and I said I wanted to get my revenge. Yeah, but who started the conversation? Who brought up the topic in the first place? Well, Daddy did, but- See? See? We're all just pawns in these little games. Daddy, is that true? Did you want me to go back to the island? Princess, it's more complicated than that. I did it all for you. And what exactly am I getting out of it? Well, it's fairly simple, sweetie. I'm going to rule the world, and you'll be my strong right hand. Ew, I don't want to be a hand. Can I just be a person? It was a metaphor, idiot. Oh, shut it, security blanket. Hey, don't make fun of my name. At least it's better than Sally Mander. I mean, come on, who uses their given name as part of their alias? Also, you're not amphibious, so your name makes no sense. I've told you a million times, a salamander is an elemental fire spirit. I burn things. Duh! The average person hears salamander and thinks of a slimy little thing that looks like a lizard. They don't think fire. 
You'd best bust out the aloe vera, because I'm going to burn your smug little face. Children, you certainly know how to push each other's buttons, don't you? Dad, at least tell me this. Does your plan to use Max to somehow rule the world involve him or Tammy dying? No, son, it does not. And how am I supposed to believe you? I'm your father, Linus. I always have your best interests at heart. You'll understand one day, when you're a parent. Did you foresee that in the future, Daddy? Does he have kids with that pitch witch? You know I won't tell you the future. It makes things messy. If I blow her head off, she won't be able to give you any little Linuses. Did you just threaten to kill my girlfriend? What? I like to daydream. Don't blame me for my imagination. Mom used to encourage it. That's because Mom wanted you to play in a healthy little kid way, not go around trying to melt the neighbor's cats with your powers. Mittens looked much better without a tail, in my opinion. Oh my god. Dad, it wasn't fair to use me and Sally the way you did, but also wasn't fair for Fourth Wall to use Tammy the way he did. Don't mention your uncle. He's a menace. I know you've been doing this whole mortal enemies, good twin, bad twin, yin and yang sort of thing since you were teenagers, but it's exhausting. Also, him telling Tammy to get close to me allowed me to get close to her, so I don't really understand how that was him trying to stop you. If anything, he helped you. Or am I missing something? Your uncle's mind is starting to fragment due to cognitive impairment. He can't see the future the same way I can. He can try his best to stop me, but he will never succeed. I will break him. I will break the fourth wall. I'm pretty sure you break the fourth wall all the time, Daddy. You've put me in a really crappy position, Dad. I can't turn you in because you'll probably be five steps ahead of me. But I can't just sit here and let you ruin my life. Ruin your life? That's a bit dramatic. If anything, we're just going to ruin your girlfriend's life. And that's supposed to make me feel better? Daddy's given you everything you have. Try to show some gratitude. Yes, thank you for giving me a life of wealth and privilege because we're so rich I have a terrible work ethic, I'm super entitled, and I don't know the value of a dollar. If I wasn't so handsome, I don't think I'd have any redeemable qualities. Literally, no one is ever going to sympathize with you on this. Son, what about your powers? Those have to be worth something. Your mother and I gifted you with amazing genetics. You know, you only ever mention mom when you want to change the subject. Or make me feel guilty. Son, I assure you... Oh look, dinner is served. Oh, this looks nami. I'll let you know when we're ready for dessert, chef. Thank you. Dad, I don't think I can do this. What? Are you a vegetarian now? These teeny little chickens are delicious! That's not what I'm talking about. I can't do... this. Waving your arms around like that still doesn't help. Do you mean having a family dinner? <sighs> no, princess. He doesn't mean the food or the dinner. He's talking about being a part of this family. Linus, is that right? I can't just stand by anymore and be complacent. You've both done unforgivable things, and you need to stop. You know we won't stop, even for you. I know. So what? You're going to do a citizen's arrest or something? Surround us in force fields and hold us captive until the authorities come and take us away? Honestly, I was just going to leave. But that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> What's so funny? Daddy will be able to break us out every time we get locked away, so this might delay our plans, but it won't stop them. She's right, son. Unless you kill us, you're only delaying the inevitable. What? I can't... I can't kill you. Actually, you could do it a variety of ways. You trained at the Academy to use your force fields to protect people, but they can be used offensively as well. I know that. I can throw the smaller fields like that patriotic hero guy that throws his shield... You know who I mean. And I can use the bigger ones to push people away. That's not what I mean. Blunt force trauma is nice and all, but you have so much more potential. You've learned to make them soundproof, but you can also make them airproof. Right now, you can make these force fields so dense that we're cut off from oxygen, you could also contract them until they crush our bodies like melons. <laughs> Dad, why would I do- Ooh, do me first! I want to get squished! 
You're both crazy. I would never do that. I could never do that. There really isn't much of a difference between killing people and... How did you phrase it? Being complacent with us killing people? If you'd grown a backbone earlier, you could have saved countless lives. I can't tell if you want me to fight you because it plays into your plans or because you're trying to use reverse psychology on me. Which one is it? Linus. You know what? It doesn't matter. I can't be here anymore. You are such a little coward. If not being able to kill my family makes me a coward, then fine. I'm a giant f***ing bitch coward, okay? Hey, you said it. You will find that you no longer have access to any of your bank accounts as I control them. Your credit cards, too. Fine. I don't care. Do it. No, son. You don't understand. You were cut off over an hour ago. It's been set up for days. You knew this was going to happen, yet you still set up for this charade of a family dinner. Why? If you hadn't come here, would you still have chosen to leave? Are you saying you wanted me to leave? So you made this happen? Or was this going to happen either way? I don't even feel like I have any free will anymore. Have I ever made a decision on my own? Or have you manipulated me into making the choices that you wanted? Whenever I think about it, I get a headache. It's better just not to think at all. Yeah, you're really good at that. Can I at least pack a bag before I go? What's the point of having expensive luggage if no one ever uses it? Sure, son, take whatever you need, but don't expect to come back. The moment you set foot outside of this estate, my security system will identify you as an enemy. Where are you going to go? I don't know. If I knew, I wouldn't tell you anyway. It doesn't matter. I already know where you're going. Stop it! At least let me pretend I'm doing this on my own. Of course. And if I can't ever come back... Yes? Can I take a few of Mom's things from the library? She spent so much time with her books, they always remind me of her. Help yourself, son. I don't have much time for reading anymore, and your sister hasn't been allowed in there for years. You know, fire hazard. I like it when the pages turn brown and pieces of paper start floating in the air. How has this house never burned down? Brother, before you go... What? Can I... eat your dinner? Be my guest. Don't choke on the tiny bones. That was sarcasm. You already knew that. Okay, now I'm making it weird. Well, I guess I'll be going. So, um, bye? That went well. If he's not going to be around anymore, does that mean I can get another dog? No, Princess. You've gone through so many already. But, Daddy, I want a corgi. They're like fuzzy little T-Rexes. Okay. But when you eventually get bored with it, promise me that you'll cremate it. We're running out of room to bury them in the gardens. Ooh, maybe I could try cremating it while it's still alive. I haven't tried that before. Well, you know, with a dog. Yes, I remember your guinea pig phase. You really were such an energetic eight-year-old. Aw, thanks, Daddy. You're the best. Anything for you, Princess. Daddy? Yes? Do you know if we're going to have to fight Linus in the future? I have this theory that if I get the air around his force fields hot enough, it might cook him like an oven. There's that wonderful imagination of yours hard at work. And no, sweetie, you don't have to worry about your brother. You won't have to fight him. Oh. Whatever. Well, listener, I hope you enjoyed this small glimpse into my life. You won't believe what's coming up next. It's not very exciting, or thrilling, or even that inventive. But it's mildly entertaining if you're into that sort of thing. Daddy, are you going to eat that, or...? What? No, princess, help yourself. Anyway, thank you for listening. Until next time, tally-ho! Sorry, I was trying something new. Note to self, tally-ho is not the way to go. Later, losers!
In this episode of Second Fiddles, MacGuffin is voiced by John Pupo, Sally is voiced by Jenny Gibson, and Linus is voiced by Alex Sinecropi. All the other stuff, production, writing, all that jazz, was done by Matt Johnson. Thanks for listening. <laughs>